it's very, it, 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 it almost looks like there's only a single convection loop. Would you agree? Yeah. Yeah. What is new about uh, making uh, this type uh, of kiln and, and biochar since the last 20 years of biochar research is that we can see the fire. Yes. Uh, because in, in all other kilns, uh, if you have a fire, it's, you only see the gases outside yes. uh, burning. But, um, but here you, you really can see the force of the fire transforming uh, the biomass to char. And, and it's about the physics of the fire, uh, understanding the fire, to make with the fire the biochar. Uh, and this is how the ancient, that had much more experience than we That's had right. uh, on making fire, as the ancient could have done it. This. It's, a, it's a deep cone that actually has 63 and a half degree sides. It's about a meter deep uh, with a little dome on the bottom and it has a drain in the bottom. And the drain allows us to drain uh, the quench water out, which is smoke water. Uh, there's a little grate in the bottom to stop the char falling into the uh, drain pipe, 70 millimeter diameter. And then the other grate above that uh, with large 150 millimeter square grid. We'll be putting long sticks in there, layering it, and the char will break up and fall through. So, so we, we built now the first layer um, on the grid uh, to avoid that uh, smaller pieces fall down and charred. And on top of this first layer, we're going to build now uh, the pyramid that we will top it to uh, create the heat to start the charring process. Okay. And then once we get it going we can scatter it out. One match, 500 kilograms of biochar. Yes. Uh, two matches. <laughs> Maybe two matches. Just to build the stress with the pyramid. Well, we're going to continue to have some smoke until we can spread the fire <coughs> across the whole kiln and begin to create that draft effect that moves all the smoke into the fire. We just spread it like two minutes ago and, uh, and now we have no smoke anymore and we, we already get the small loops. We have the fire in the middle. It's difficult to see. Uh, if you have no smoke, what are the dynamics? When you see these uh, white ashes starting to appear on the surface of the wood, it's time to put the next layer. Yeah, and of course this layer is a bit haphazard, <coughs> a bit haphazard because we just knocked the pyramid down. Yeah. You see some white on the surface layer. Some ashes uh, shows that oxidation uh, gets into the process, so to put the next layer to deliver uh, more wood gas to fire above the wood and uh, get back the heat by reflection and pyrolysis. I'd like to explain what we learned about how the, the, the draft does work on this kiln. Uh, what's going to, when, the, when the kiln is hot and there's an updraft in the center, it's pulling air up around the edge of the cone, and that air rising, even preheating a little bit, coming up around the edge of the cone, updrafting here, pulls air from the inside of the cone. Okay, so that it trains the air like this, and then that pulls air over from the center of the cone, which then pulls air down 
in the interior of the cone and, you, and, and then pulls air across from the outside. So you end up with a loop in here like this. So this updraft creates a loop, a toroidal uh, vortex all the way around the cone which feeds oxygen in and down into the material in the cone. But the vortex may vary in size but it's something like about this size so it penetrates about so far down into the kiln. 50-60 centimeters down in the kiln and the material at that level can in fact begin to the char can begin to oxidize and turn to ash so as that happens we layer another layer of wood on and the and the flames and the updraft from that layer of wood then that keeps the oxygen away from the layer below and it just keeps all settling down into the base of the kiln the, the, the biochar that's created Coming back up to our Contiki, you can see we've got a layer of ash on there now, so on the top, so we'll put another layer of wood over the top of that. We threw some uh, manure on there so that's drying out and smoking a little bit but what the smoke helps you see is the convection and so over there you can see this, there's a, a vortex, a horizontal vortex being created as the air is updrafted past the edge of the kiln on the outside and it um, drags the air up on the inside so it pulls uh, air across horizontally and smoke across horizontally in the kiln from the center towards the outside and from on the top it drags it back towards the center and creates a vortex out there. And you can see the shimmer there. There's no smoke. And we're adding another layer now, which of course will disturb the fire a little bit and you'll see a little smoke, but it's gonna get caught in the flames. Very, very clear how that smoke is coming out and going sideways. Except when it's disturbed by the wind, it basically is going horizontally, radially outwards. What, what is, what's really interesting and fascinating that uh, cutting a trunk like this somewhere, the energy you need to cut it here is uh, the same energy that you gain uh, when you break up the molecules that are inside uh, by the heat. So recovering the chemical bounding energy is very important and the, the less we have to cut it, the more energy we get out of it and recover.
So this is uh, the day after, uh, in the morning. We quenched it yesterday night, and as you can see, uh, the water on top of the kiln is uh, crystal clear water. Char is uh, without odor. Uh, you can see Paul's hand uh, like in a crystal clear river. Uh, interestingly, uh, the water uh, is a little bit soapy on the feeling. I will measure the pH and uh, look uh, where that might come from. Uh, it seems that all of the uh, pieces we can see here on the top layer are finely calcinated. Um, there's no non-calcinated parts that we discovered. Uh, it breaks very nicely and you have beautiful biochar structure. So this water is still clean after 100 liters. The whole water that we get out of the kiln uh, is like filtered water, uh, which is uh, really a very satisfying sign for this technology.